I'm a uh, licensed clinical social worker, and I my practice is about two hours driving time south of Chicago in the United States. And um, I, I basically do two different types of work. One of them is I work in a private practice clinic um, where, I, where I do traditional face-to-face -face therapy. And I do a lot of anger management, um, as well as some couples therapy, working with depression, that kind of thing. Um, and then from my home office, I do a lot of Skype and telephone sessions. Again, working with similar issues, a lot of anger management. Um, sometimes it's working with truck drivers at truckertherapy.com, and then other times it's working with the general population. So th those are a few of my specialties and, and how that works. Mm. Sounds really exciting, but, but you work across a couple of different locations and with quite a wide range of, of individuals. So, yeah. yeah, it's great to have you here tonight to kind of think about your anger management um, program. So, well, I think that's a great place to start. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the, the program that you offer in your work, please? Well, the anger management program that I do is um, it's based on, on, on basically two things. It's based on education, and it's also based on therapy. So it is an anger management program that is actually evidence-based. So that means there's a good bit of research that's been put into it, and there's actually a workbook that, that goes along with this program, and it guides the client through 12 sessions and you actually do this as prescribed, so that way you have the evidence there as far as, you know, this is what works for most people. Mm. So I think the big, the big thing that we need to stress here is that when people think of anger management, usually they think that it is a, just a set of techniques and it's only education. So kind of the classic anger management is, okay, if you're mad, you need to count to 10. You need to breathe deeply. You need to do yoga that kind of thing. Um, with the program that I do, we do talk about that, yes. But we also look at the therapy side, which is, okay, where is the anger coming from? Is there underlying depression, anxiety, bipolar? Is it purely situational and no type of mental illness at all? Um, you know, there, there's countless things that can be causing that anger. So once you, you address that anger... Um, then the anger is more likely to stop rather than just simply throwing techniques at it. Mm. Yeah, so I guess when you describe a 12-step program, it's easy to think, oh, well, it's just kind of sit, almost like sitting in a classroom just learning by rote some techniques. But you're thinking, well, yes, it needs that, and maybe it needs something a little extra as well, something a bit more therapeutic. Exactly, yes, yes. Well, I mean, the clients can often be looking for techniques. They can be looking for something to take away, especially in the first few sessions. And um, c can you tell us a little bit about some of the techniques that you might use? Might I can. Use? Yes, most definitely. And what I'm looking at right now is, is a handout that I give um, everyone. If you, if you see me in the office, you get a piece of paper. If uh, you see me on the phone or Skype, you... Uh, and get it emailed to you. Um, so yeah, a lot of times when someone comes in, they say, okay, what do I do? How can I get this anger under control? And if we're going to spend the next one or two sessions just trying to get a background of why, you, why you're feeling this stuff, it's nothing practical. It's nothing immediate. So I definitely want to give people the immediate, um, you know, this is something you can take home with you. So I'll just pick a few things out of this list that I tell people. Um, one of the things is, when somebody is angry, you have them ask themselves, is this going to matter tomorrow? Is it going to matter next week or next month? Usually when you're mad about something, it is not going to matter next week. Um, you know, there's always exceptions to that, but usually what we're mad about, by the morning, it's going to be gone. Mm. And uh, then that kind of leads into, if it does matter next month and you're still going to be mad, then, well, maybe you need to use that anger in a good productive way instead of, you know, being destructive about the anger. Another big one is, what right do I have that's being violated? 
So that's a big one. Um, most of the time, the things that make us angry, it's not an inherent human right that we have. It's usually, this person is irritating me, or I feel disrespected, or, you know, I just don't like something. It's, it's not a real human right that, that the person is violating. Mm. So, you know, again, we can be a little too sensitive, especially if we're stressed out. And then we get ourselves all worked up over something that really isn't, you know, any huge deal. Um, so something about those techniques that are helping people to get the experience into some kind of perspective. Exactly. Mm. Yes, yes. And if I can mention one more real quick here. Yeah, please. Is looking at anger as a test. So if, if somebody is doing something and you become angry, then you have to kind of set back, and maybe that's a little bit of the perspective as well, and say, okay, am I going to let that person make me angry? They're testing me. Am I going to be able to use these anger management skills that I've learned? As a, uh, am I going to be able to put it into into play, or am I going to fail this test and become really angry? So that that kind of makes makes it look a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe changes the perspective a bit. Someone then has some of these techniques that are starting to embed themselves in their person. They can then challenge themselves to use them I guess. Right, exactly yes Yeah, they seem like really helpful tools for people to take away and to have something almost instantly to use around their experience of anger Well thank you, yes, and, and I, I try to give people, uh, you know, something that they, can, that they can take home and practice uh, because that's really where people make the change when they're when they're talking with me, it's a meeting, you know, and we talk about ideas. It's it's what you do outside of the office, outside of the Skype session. That's what uh, what really creates change for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. That okay, there's what goes on in the session and what we could almost persuade people into saying and thinking, but. Yes. But I guess you have in mind, well, what's it like for the person once they go away and the experience of anger then? Yes, yes. And it's all about them practicing the techniques once once they're outside of the session. And it's about what they have right here, what the, what their motivation is. You know, if they change their, their thoughts and their feelings, then that's when they're going to have success versus me saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's not going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. So something about what goes on in here. Yes. And helping people to transform that that can um, make a big difference. And I mean, I really like some of the comments that you made when we talked earlier about um, about energy and how people might see. Is it, is it kind of a, a good time to talk about s- some of those ideas? Or? I think so. Yes. Yes. If you if you look at, at anger as this this ball of energy, um, you're 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 worked up, you're angry. What are you going to do with all this energy that you have? So, I mean, one of the things that I point out to all of my clients is that being angry, it's it's human to to have anger. So it's it's not an anger elimination program or anger abstinence or nothing like that. It's anger management. So, you know, you have anger, let's deal with it. So looking at that energy that anger is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to do something um, constructive? You know, is that going to give you the motivation to talk with somebody in an appropriate manner and say, hey, these are my feelings, I'm upset, let's work through this? Or are you going to get mad and do something destructive and hit them or just make rude, sarcastic comments on down the line? So I think that's really important to look at and remember that it's this energy. What are you going to do with it? And then it's it's in here. It's the motivation of am I motivated to handle it appropriately or not? Mm. And then stress and anxiety is another example of it's very similar energy. Again, are you going to let it eat you up?